Nice to see you all anyway. Same, likewise. Um, Joe, uh, Roy, you, Roy, you're hearing us now. You haven't spoken yet. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Fantastic, yeah. Yeah, we can hear you, Roy. <laughs> Joseph, where we were yesterday was we were talk we sort of more or less agreed that for young kids or young lads trying to make it into good football, they'd have to sort of like leave Gibraltar and and we were looking at the sort of pathway that they would have to take, whether that be through the government, through the GFA, through the clubs, or privately just doing it themselves. And yeah. uh, obviously your name come up because uh, if anybody knows the, the hard side of it, you do, because that's what, what happened to you. Is that, is that true? Is that the it's case? Correct, yeah. this, is, this is the case, yes. Um, first time I actually left Gibraltar, I think I was 15 years old. Uh, I was sent to UK. Uh, I was there for about three weeks, roughly. I was I was supposed to go for one week for uh, for uh, trials, like they used to do. Um, they liked how I how I was doing, and I stayed there for an extra two weeks. Um, and it's 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 not a it's not very e let's just say it's, it's not easy to go abroad, especially 15 years of age, and be there by yourself. Um, I did have someone who used to take care of me. Uh, well, a family actually. They put me in a family home, um, and they used to take great care of me. But uh, it's not like today. Nowadays, you have Instagram, you've got WhatsApp, you've got everything. Your way where you can contact your parents, you can contact your friends, you can. You know what I mean? So back then, I didn't have internet. And there was there was nothing really. So um, I just used to talk with my parents maybe once every two days, and it, it was quite difficult. It was quite difficult to be honest. Yeah, it was. So. I thought you went to Bologna first, or, or am I mistaken? You didn't, no, no, you didn't was, start you off in Saval. No, no. Uh, Saval was my last was my last uh, adventure. Um, I went to UK when I was fifteen. I went to UK when I was sixteen. I went to UK when I was seventeen. Um, then from UK when I was seventeen, I moved. I was going to get a, uh, a contract signed with uh, Cambridge United, uh, but they. I played here a friendly with the, the Gibraltar squad versus AS Monaco amateur, the amateur side. Um, they saw me how I played. They were quite interested and, and they called me over uh, to do a trial with the AS Monaco under 18s. I was 17 back then. Um, and I went to Monaco. I was there in UK for about two months, roughly, at Cambridge United. I, like I said, I was about to get a contract signed with them. And they they called me from AS Monaco and I decided to go there. It's a bigger club. So I went there. And I was there for another month and a half, roughly, in AS Monaco. Um, mm-hmm. But then it didn't work out. Because one thing or another. And I ended back in, in Jib. Uh, one of my friends, who was Jason Pusey, back, at, back then, told me that he was playing in Saval. He had been spotted for Atletico Madrid. And... I don't know, he kind of like told me you should come over. And I said, well, I might as well. And I played for half a season with Sabal. And then I got signed for La Bologna straight away. So, uh, I'll be... Uh, I'll Roy, be quite... Roy, you were in the UK. Before you came back to Jib, did you did you try out in, in the UK at all? I did. I, I was actually at, um, at Luton Town. I was 13 at the time. I was at Luton Town for about six months. But that's that's about it. That's about how far I got, really. Uh, you know, um, back in those days, uh, well, it wasn't very easy to come around getting trials. To be honest, um, to be fair, at, at the time there was there was boys here who were getting more trials than I was when I was in UK. I remember being in UK. It's like it's like everything, Neil. I think I think if you, if you know the the right people, you know you can get the trials. If you don't, you know, it's not very. I, I I don't think it's very easy to get trials just by. Just by talent, put it that way. I think I think uh, you need the right contacts to get in there. Um, I remember some of the lads here in Gibraltar, whilst I was living in England, going on trial at Barnet. To be fair, I, mean, I think in fact Ivan Glover, I think was one of them. Ivan Glover, um, Keith Menes was another. Um, I think Wayne Askers as well went over. Um, but yeah, in Luton Town, I, I went to. I was a tried out when I was 17. I think it was 17, 18. Just before I came over with a uh, Leighton Orient, I had a couple of weeks there. Didn't work out either. And then, to be fair, Neil, I, I got bored of, of, of just not having uh, not having enough opportunities. 
look back now and, and, and it's a bit of a regret of not um, having stayed on in UK and tried out at the lower level in you know conference um, I lived in, in Enfield and, and there was always opportunities available to to play like sort of semi-pro for Enfield Town and all the the lower leagues but um, to be honest I, I got bored by them and I just decided to come back to Gibraltar. It's a difficult time in your life when you're that young isn't it? Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, knowing like, knowing what to do, what, what, what's right and what's wrong. To, to be fair, Neil, I think like Joe said, it's it's, it's not easy. It's, it's it's very tough, and and I, I think as well when the hard part is knowing everything you're sacrificing and 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 keeping in contact with your mates who are, who are living the life, if you want to call it, and yeah. uh, that's that's a very big pull. Um, but like I said, you know, when I look back now, I think you know I should have just stayed there. It was when I came back within a year, all my mates had gone back to UK to study. So I was in Gibraltar and they were all in UK. But, you know, it's, that's how it worked out. Touching on something that Lee said yesterday, Lee was looking towards the, the Spanish pathway, as in La Balona and Cadiz. And that, that's sort of, surely that's more achievable. You would know that, um, Joseph, because, you know, they're right on the doorstep. So you're not leaving home as such. No, uh, I mean, it's it's it's, it's totally different uh, going abroad uh, to UK to or elsewhere. I mean, you can go to Germany and uh, and elsewhere. Um, it's not the same to just being across the border. I mean, Cadiz is an hour and a half away. Valona is ten minutes, fifteen minutes away. Um, so Sabal is just here as well. Algeciras is 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 just around the corner. Um, it's it's not the same. I mean, the dedication. At the end of the day, it comes down to, to what you want in, in, in your life. Um, if you want it comfortable, if you want it, if you want the, the hard way. I mean, um, if you go abroad, it's going to be the hard way. If you want to just come across the other border, it's going to be the easy way. Um, but the easy way, I mean, in the sense of you've got your family still here with you, if, if you know what I mean, if you know where I'm coming from. Um, you're still going to be living in Gibraltar. All you have to do is cross the frontier, go to train. Um, play your matches obviously if you have to play in Cordoba in, in Jerez wherever you have to play uh, but it's not the same I mean I mean, it's, it, it is a better option in the sense if, if you're like one of those people who can't be away from your parents uh, or your family I mean some people are uh, homesick like they say um, I but mean it happened to my brother it, my brother Kenneth was sent to Bolton Wanderers he was actually given he was actually going to stay there but he was homesick. He came back in two weeks. He said he couldn't. He couldn't be there. So I mean, I but it's, to be fair, it's it's a, it's better now, eh, um, Joseph. I mean, I remember at your brother's age, seventeen, eighteen, and uh, discussing with my parents about going to the UK to further your career, and and I remember it was like a shock. Them turning around and saying, "What? Why? Uh, you need and, and the things, the fear. You need to do the washing. You need to cook for yourself. And those things were huge in those in those days. That because I mean, I was born with a closed border scenario. Um. So when they mentioned those things, and then ten years later, when when I actually did as a mature student." A degree and then I did the masters it's exactly the same words uh, that Roy was saying now regrets well yes uh, but you, in life you can't look back um, and I, st I am still confident that uh, not enough has been done here we do have the talent but we need to create the pathway and a system because um, it's not easy and, and you've been there I mean uh, the UK is not the best places to be in in winter, especially. I mean, I I spend seventy percent of my time working in the UK. I literally hate it. Come November, December, when at three o'clock it's already nights. Well, that was, um, it was like that in summer as well, most of the time. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you used to get the odd day where you 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 should go out to the park and so on. But um, I mean, the, the, the time that I spent there uh, on trials and stuff like that, it was 
getting up early in the morning, going to the training session. I used to have to make my own way there as well. That's another thing. I used to have to get a, a bus to the train station, then get on the train, take me to the closest uh, uh, stop that was to, to, that, to the training area, and then get another bus from that training uh, from that train station to the training area and so on. I mean, I I, I got hardly any help to be honest. Eh? Um, when I actually was it was in Millwall, I did get more help. But um, it's it's like you say, the weather, the conditions, uh, <laughs> making your own food, taking care of yourself. It's 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 difficult. I mean, I Look, mean, it's, I think this it's, in yeah. Gibraltar, the thing is, I don't know, I don't know if I'm wrong when I say this, but we live in a bubble. We do. That's that's the way you I are one hundred percent right. <laughs> we live in a bubble, um, and the only people who actually get uh, to to know what it feels like to be outside this bubble is those who maybe go to uni, who have to spend time by themselves, um, and and other people who actually I, I don't know, those people who actually go out and 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 and, and visit the world. To be honest, um, why? Because they're making it on their own. They're not yeah. depending on their family or parents. I mean, yeah, of course, you, if you go to uni, you depend on the grant, money that your parents are giving you, et cetera, et cetera. But you're by yourself. So it's, it's different. It's a different mentality. You come back with a different mentality. What's, uh, you're not wrong. You hit the nail on the head. I, th I, I think I, I agree entirely with you. Going back to what um, Joseph said about uh, all the traveling stuff, I mean, I think one of the, uh, well, an issue here in Gibraltar anyway is, um, and in comparison to to England and, and, and I know this from from my days when, when I actually moved to England when I was 12 um, it's not just the playing football which is which is tough it's everything that comes with it you know and, and I remember being 13 like, again going back to my days when I was at Luton for those six months and I went from literally living here in Gibraltar to having to wake up at six in the morning get walk 20 minutes get a train in the underground with 12 years old on my own to go to school, then come back, come home, get in the van with my dad, drive up an hour to Luton train. I mean, it's, it's everything that comes with it. I, th I think it, it helps you mature. And I, I think that's, that's a, a big difference as well. If you compare, if you were to compare a 14 year old boy from UK to a 14 year old boy here in Gibraltar, you're talking about two different, two different kids. Choc it's choke and cheese, right? Mm -hmm. But this, is one of the point, this is one of the points I wanted to bring Mick in on because surely you see the kids at that age, Mick. Um, do you see, like, for example, the, an old 15-year-old to a young 15-year-old could be almost a year at school age. You must see a complete difference. I mean, some, some kids mature a lot quicker than others, don't they? Especially at that age in, in your teens. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, think, I think you get... Each kid is it really can be different, and it's it's difficult to generalize. So we are kind of generalizing here. Um, I think what you have, if you're comparing Gibraltarian kids with uh, with UK kids um, or Spanish kids, I think in terms of talent, raw talent, and ability, there's pro there's probably not a lot of difference. But it's what what you the other guys have t uh, touched upon there. It's it's mentality. And it's mindset, and it's a sort of toughness uh, that that you get in in Spain or in UK, where you where you are you are being challenged every day. You know, getting up uh, to to do whatever you have to do to get to the training sessions, traveling, traveling. Um, if you're if you're playing football at, at youth level in UK, uh, the traveling with your team, with your teammates, and with your parents is is character building really um and working all those things out okay your parents might be might be taking you but um it's a strain and it puts a lot of strain on you and and that that builds toughness mental toughness which okay you then what you then see it, you see that toughness on the pitch when when they're up against it where where they have to make tough decisions and they're, they're a little bit harder and tougher in situations where you want them to be harder and tougher um having said that here um i think i think we do naturally we we protect our kids uh and i think that's one of the reasons 
we all love Gibraltar so much because we we have we have a fantastic community uh, spirit amount, uh, around, and uh, and all of our kids get massive opportunities to play sport, uh, to play many sports as well. So um, because of the, because we're it's such a small place, we we're spoilt for the choice that we get. Um, but then having said that, that that doesn't um, it doesn't allow for that toughness to, to come through. Um, I, w I was going to mention a couple of boys who, who are out there doing, doing, quite, uh, doing something quite interesting. I think TJ DeBar and Jalen Hankins are, uh, are experimenting with, uh, with the type of lifestyle that, um, and the choices that Joseph and Roy were talking about. So they're, they're quite, let, let's see how those guys get on over the next year or so to see if they settle, see if they thrive, see if they come through that test that they're, they're putting themselves through. Because, you know, that, that, they're playing in Spain, but they're away from home, they're having to settle, they're having to... They're, they're having not to over the home. border, they're, they're really yeah. sort of like... Yeah, so, so they're, having to, they're having to get used to life away from home, uh, away from their parents and families, so... So I think that's a real test. Uh, it's a good test for them. And whatever happens, they'll come back. When they come back for international duty or if they come back to play in Jib, they'll be better for it and stronger for it. But I, th I think both of them are coping quite well from what I can gather. So there are different pathways. I think what we're talking about here is whether, whether we feel uh, there should be more, a more formal organization of this. Uh, because you could, uh, you could argue, well... If if these boys are good enough, then the the, team, the clubs will come and they'll pick yeah. them up, and and they will find their they'll find their true true level, whether it's level five or level six or level four in the UK or wherever. But should there be a more formal organisation of that, may, maybe being taken on by by the authorities, the GFA, or or help from the GFA and the government to to try and uh, establish these more formal pathways, I suppose. That's the key question. It's a good point. It's a good point.